Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Candice. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Redson, um, and I'm here today to, to tell you about uh, how to set up an environment uh, so that you can write a Linux kernel um, in, in Rust. Um, so this is what uh, we're going to, to cover today. I'll, I'll, I'll do a brief um, introduction and, and status update. Um, then I'm going to tell you how to uh, set up the environment from a fresh install. So I will have a, a, a VM, uh, Ubuntu VM running and, and we'll start from there. Uh, and then some, some conclusions uh, after that. Um, my video is frozen at the moment. I'm not sure if you can, okay, it came back. Uh, yeah, I hope it's still working. Um, so um, a quick intro on, on Rust for Linux. Um, our goal is to make Rust a first class language for, for Linux kernel development. Um, there is a, a trimmed down version of, of our patch series that is planned to be merged in, in 6.1, which should be in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, so we're very excited to see it being merged. Uh, the, the, the code that I'm going to show you is from our development branch, uh, but our expectation is that once it's merged, you can, you can do something very similar in, in just regular mainline uh, upstream uh, Linux kernel uh, checkouts. Uh, We've actually had uh, already three series on, on Rust for Linux in the mentorship series, um, uh, three sessions. Um, the last one uh, I, I, I presented and was uh, how to write modules. Uh, and then we went uh, through the steps to, 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 to write these modules, but um, we started from a VM that was all set up, right? So, so this session is, is a prequel to that, right? So what we're going to, to, to uh, work here is how to get to that state where we can write code and uh, compile it and run it on QMU with a busy box image. Um, so this is the, the, the plan for today. Uh, I sort of already mentioned this, but we'll start from a fresh remote installation. We'll fetch some source code. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, install tools and libraries. Uh, then we're going to build everything that we need to build to, to, to test the kernel. Uh, then we boot with QMU and, uh, and, and busy box. Uh, and then I'll also attach GDB to it to show how we can set breakpoints and inspect, inspect some state uh, of, of the kernel as it runs. Uh, then if we have time, I can also show some um, uh, Rust analyzer related stuff, which is um, um, this plugin or this um, uh, language server that, that allows us to introspect into the code. And it's uh, actually very, very uh, cool and works with different IDEs. So I'm gonna show it with uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, so with that, um, let's switch to the to the VM uh, running Ubuntu. Uh, oh, one thing that I should say, uh, Kenneth already mentioned, but I'm going to reiterate it is: if you have questions, uh, I'm, I'm happy to take them uh, throughout the the presentation. Uh, so let me share share the VM here. All right, so what we have here is, is a fresh install of, of Ubuntu. Uh, there are only two things that I, that I installed that didn't uh, come in it by default. And this is like a, a minimal uh, um, installation. Uh, the two things that I installed are GCC and Make. And, and I had to install them because um, I wanted to install some, some guest uh, VM additions or enlightenments to, 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 to this, and it, it required that to compile the kernel module. Um, so let's get started. So uh, we have here um, um, a fresh install. I'm gonna create a, a source directory and I'm going to, to clone the, the source code for, for Rust for Linux uh, here. One thing that I'm going to do here, which, which you wouldn't do uh, in, in, in your environment is setting this depth to one. And the reason I'm setting this to, to one here is because I don't, we don't want to, to wait a lot here uh, for, for, for the download of, of, of everything. So we're just gonna get the, the latest version. Uh, I'm not sure if, if case matters here, but let's do it this way. Um, yeah, so, so you wouldn't actually do the, the depth one here. Uh, we're gonna do it for... Okay, so the first thing we run into is that uh, in this minimal installation, we don't even have Git. So the first thing we're going to install is, 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 is Git. Um, so 
try that. Uh, so apt install uh, git will install git. Um, and I confirm and we wait for it to install. It, it's, it's not going to be um, long. And git, of course, is the source control tool that we use uh, in the kernel. Um, so now that we have git, let's try to, to clone the, the repo. And there you go, it's, it's uh, downloading. While we wait for this uh, download, there's another repo that we're going to need, which is the, the busybox one. So we may want to just create, um, let me increase the font size. We need to increase the font size. Actually, yeah. this is fine. Um, well, let's do the same thing here. Uh, depth one. Uh, mirror. Um, busy box. Let's try this out. Yep. Okay, so we're not. We're also cloning busy box. It's much smaller. And it's already done. Let's go back to the kernel. Okay, so um, we have both now in, in source. We have Linux and, and BusyBox. And if we go into Linux, we get the, uh, the Linux uh, source code here. And um, the first thing we want to do when we have uh, 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 the kernel source code is, and, and before we can build it, is to configure it, right? Um, so one thing that that uh, we did do uh, as part of this project is we created this minimal uh, uh, configuration that you can use to uh, uh, just run the kernel with with QMU and, and BusyBox. So that's that's what we're going to 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 try to do. Well, and, and since we, oh the reason we want to do it this way is because we want we don't want to take a lot of time to rebuild the kernel each time we need to to do it, and we don't want to take a lot of time uh, booting when we want to to test things out. Uh, so this is a very uh, good setup for you to relatively quickly iterate over your 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 changes and during your development cycle. Um, so um, the way to configure the kernel is this: you do a make and you do uh, all no config, um, and then we have this qmu dash busybox dash min dot config, right? But as we, we try to do that, a bunch of things are going to fail and uh, we're going to install the packages uh, as we go and um, I'm not. I'm trying to avoid uh, giving like a list of packages and things that you have to install ahead of time. Uh, so I'm trying to show here how how you would discover that you need these things. Okay. So so uh, let's try that. So the first thing it, it complains is, is that uh, it cannot find flex, right? So let's um, let's install flex. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a small package, so it it, it won't be long. Um, okay, so it came back. Flex is installed. So let's let's try again to do the the, the, the minimal uh, thing. Now it's complaining that it it cannot find uh, Bison. Let's install that. Um, um, Redson, uh, yep. somebody's I think asking um, the reference to commands. So what I can do is I'm kind of following along, Redson. I can uh, cut and paste the commands for you in the chat. Okay. So yeah. I think people want to follow along. Um, give me just a minute. Um, I will cut and paste starting from the beginning of cloning uh, Linux. Um, if you want Flex and install, I already have all of that on my uh, system. I won't be running them, but I will I will cut and paste those commands as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Um, should I keep on going or should I wait for a bit before uh, so you can paste the thing? Just go on? ahead, Joe, go ahead, keep going. I will I will keep uh, cutting and pasting. Yeah, please go ahead. Cool, cool. thanks, Ron. Uh, all right, so uh, Bison, it's complaining about uh, Bison. So, so let's install that. Uh, also a small package. Uh, it's not gonna take long um, for this to, to install. Okay, so now we have these two. Let's try to um, configure the kernel. Um, and now this time it succeeded, uh, which is good. Um, now, another thing that um, I should say before, before I show you the next step is that uh, the, the Rust uh, compiler toolchain uses LLVM. So what we want to do is we want to, to compile the kernel with LLVM. So well, the, the way we do it is we had this, we set this LLVM equals to one um, option uh, in when we do make. Right. Uh, so here it's complaining that we don't have plan because when we switch to LLVM, we switch the, the C compiler as well from GCC to plan. So let's let's install uh, plan. Plan is, is 
is bigger. So we're, ins we're installing Clang, but Clang is not going to be enough. Uh, we're we're going to have to install LLVM itself. Um, so we we're going to do that uh, next. Um, in fact, while while it's uh, while Clang is installing, one thing we can do is we can and, and we wait. We can come to 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 BusyBox because BusyBox just uses um, GCC, so so we don't need to um, to wait for for. For Clang to continue. Actually, it, it finished. So um, let's install LLVM as well. Um, yeah, okay. So, so let, let's not do the busy box thing now because uh, uh, Clang and LLVM are already, already installed. So let's 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 run make again. Uh, I'll no config, QMU busy box, um, LLVM set to one. Now it's complaining about um, the link I'm missing, LLD. Uh, Funny enough, we actually got a, a question on the mailing list about uh, this very error. And, and the answer, of course, is to just install LLD. Uh, that's one way out of it. So let's install it. Uh, also, a small package. Uh, Clank, I think, was, was the biggest one uh, that we had for this. Uh, let's try uh, once again. Yeah, so so we've succeeded. Okay, so so now we have the kernel configured, and now we could um, um, just compile the kernel. However, if we comp just compile the kernel now, it's it's not going to have um, uh, Rust uh, enabled. Um, what what we need to do here is is there is there is another config that we, we can we can append here, which is Rust.config. So if we, if we try to do that, um, it runs. And it it doesn't complain, but if we look at 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 the the dot config file, which is the uh, the, the the final uh, configuration that that we have, um, it doesn't really have uh, uh, Rust. Let me uh, actually I don't, we don't need to run this again. Let's just try to compile the thing. Let's see how how it goes. Um, I'm going to do the J8 to compile with um, eight CPUs. Let's see if I have eight CPUs on this. Yes, I have eight CPUs on this VM. Um, so it's, it started compiling and, and uh, the, the Rust code actually runs um, here at the top and we see that, that Rust uh, didn't run. So uh, we didn't manage to, to enable uh, Rust by, by just running that command. Uh, and the reason is because we don't have uh, Rust installed. Uh, actually, not just Rust, we don't have a bunch of things installed. Now, one thing that uh, helps us there is this uh, is this target uh, Rust available? Um, so if if you run this uh, make LLVM equals one in Rust available, it's gonna look at all the, the dependencies, all the things that you need to have installed uh, before you can you can uh, compile with Rust. And the first the very first thing it complains about is is Rust C, right? So Rust C is, is the Rust compiler. Uh, it's not it's not here. This is a fresh installation. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to open the browser here just real quick um, and uh, I'm going. I'm going to to look for uh, Rust C installation, and I have to accept. Um, and I'm looking for this uh, command line. Um, I'm going to copy it and and paste it here. So the, the reason we're doing this is because we actually need uh, one of the uh, not not the very latest version, but we need a very a fairly recent uh, version. So if we just install Rust. Uh, from the from the uh, from the distribution, it's not going to be uh, new enough or recent enough. Um, so we're going to go through the. Sure, do you have? Yes, um, that, yeah. one question, Watson. I'm following along. I I did I typed uh, make LLVM equal to one all no config yeah. uh, with the QMU option. I am seeing I installed LLVM and uh, Clang, which I don't have yeah. right now. I just installed them. It's right. saying ld dot LLD not found. Yes. So so if you scroll up, you have to install another package called LLD. Okay. I guess. Okay. I'll I'll continue. Yes. Let me see if I so yes, this is the area you're seeing, right? So, so you need to install this. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So need... yeah, okay. I'll I'll follow along and I'll put the same command in the chat. Cool. For people. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Um 
All right, so so I copied um, the comment and, and the thing I was saying was that uh, we, we did this this uh, um, more recent version of the compiler. Uh, now, what we want to do eventually is is um, find a, a version that is that is uh, uh, that has all the features that we need and it doesn't need any uh, nightly features, and then we we mark that as as the minimum uh, version for uh, for Rust. And then our expectation is that eventually this will become available in distribution. So you can just use um, apt install, for example, to, to install that. And even if it's not the, the, the Rust C official packet, it could be something like Rust C for uh, the Linux kernel or something like that. Um, so anyway, let's, let's, let's install this uh, for now. Uh, and trying to run curl, it, it fails because it says that curl is, is not installed. Uh, so let's install uh, curl. Uh, which is also a, a, a small package. Shouldn't take a lot of time. Um, and let's try again uh, the Rust compiler. And I'll just proceed with the default installation. And it's installing some some extra stuff. Um, Clippy is 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 a linter. Uh, if we have time in the end, I'll I'll show you a run of. Hi everyone. Um, I think that what's in might have gotten frozen. So <laughs> if you can just give us a minute and we will troubleshoot and get him back. Sorry, folks. Uh, my machine froze up. It's it's a new machine, um, so I had to to restart it. Let me um, get back to the to the VM here. So um, people are saying that they can't cut in uh, the copy from the uh, chat, Candice, uh, or the uh, participants cannot copy in the commands from the chat by any chance? Yeah, 
I'm going to try to change a setting and zoom and see if that'll fix it. And um, if not, we can definitely, um, I can save the chat and we can post it on the webinar page um, with all the commands so that we can make that document available. But let me go ahead and try changing a setting and we will see if that works. Okay. If not, um, I don't know if people can cut and paste from the uh, Q and A. So we'll 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 figure something out, um, everybody. In just a minute. Can you see the the VM back? I hope you can. Yes, Maybe. we can. Yes, we can. Let's see if, if Rust C is installed. Oh, it doesn't. Doesn't look like it. Let me run the, the command again. Okay. Oh, that okay. So the can you give uh, put the URL for that? On yes. The chat? Okay. If you can just do that on the chat in the chat, that would be great. Let me see how I can do more chat. Uh, okay, I can I can do that. Don't worry about it. Um, you continue and then I'll get that. No, I have I have the chat up now here, so it's, it's okay. Oh, okay. okay, I see it. I see it. Okay, thank you. That. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if it's if it's if if you type in it and and pasting a uh, is not uh, working out, I can I can uh, probably paste the comments here too myself. Okay. Let's, let's see. Well, I am I am able to uh, paste them. I think people are unable to copy for as participants, oh. so so that is the problem. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, no, I think we're in some, some bad state here. Let's see. Let's see if we. This is in a different. Okay. So let's um. Let's do let's do the make LLVM equals to one rest available again. Let's see what, what it says. It's complaining that uh, we don't have a uh, bind gen. So one thing that I do, um, there's there's this um, documentation, um, Rust, and there's a quick start quick start guide. Um, and what I usually do is, is I come to, to this guide and I search for bind gen. And then there's a, there's a command that we can run. Here it is to, to install bind gen. Uh, I'll paste it here. Let's see if, if yeah, there's, there's there's another command that I was going to show later, but um, I'm going to do it now because uh, since it's it it got uh, let me see here. Uh, it's this override one. So this will actually force uh, Rust to 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 download a, the, the version that we want uh, in the kernel. So at, at the moment, uh, 1.64 I think is the latest, and we use 1.62. Yeah. So this one is 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 saying that we will use uh, 1.62 uh, for this directory. Uh, so again, it's it's installing things, and this is where we. We locked up uh, uh, last time. So hopefully, it's not going to to happen again. Okay, so now it's, it says it's installed. Let's see how things are. Yeah, things are better now. Um, so let's let's try to run the. Uh, so if 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 we hasn't had to do this before, what would have happened is when we ran uh, uh, make uh, Rust available, it would complain. It would say, "Oh, you have sixty four, and we need sixty two. So we go into into the to the uh, quick guide, quick start guide, and and, and switch. Uh, but anyway, let's let's run again. The I will actually I can paste um, the override stuff there. So anyway, let's 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 do again the the bind chain one. Yeah, there you go. So uh, now it's it's fetching and it's going to fetch a bunch of a bunch of things here. Um, so now maybe is, is a good time while it's fetching for us to to go to busy box. Um, we'll, we'll actually, uh, yeah, that's. 
So BusyBox actually uh, has some something very, very similar to the kernel. It has a, a configuration. Um, and what we can do is we can just use the, the default configuration. And we make that config. Uh, and this, this uses the, the, the default configuration. There is, there's one thing that we want to do. Um, let's take a quick look here at Bindjet. One thing that, that we want to do is we want to, to compile uh, the, the BusyBox binary statically. Okay, so um, we're gonna go into menu config, make menu config for, for BusyBox. And we're going to look for, we're going to settings. Uh, and then here we're gonna search for an option that um, lets us compile binaries here. So build options, build static binary. There you go. So with this, we won't, we won't need to, to um, add uh, a libc to our, to our image. Let's go. So we, we've configured uh, um, BusyBox. Uh, let's, let's build it. Um, so now we have, we have both uh, BusyBox and uh, uh, being built in Bindgen, but Bindgen, Bindgen uh, became available. So let's, let's now run the Rust available command again. And now it's complaining that I cannot find core, the source code for core, right? So we're gonna go back into the quick start uh, guide and there's a command there, this command, rust up component add rust source to install the, the core source code for the .62 version. And it's, in, it's installed already. So let's now try to run uh, Rust available. Now uh, it says Rust is available. So what we can do now is we can try to run our um, all no config. And we're going to say QMU busy box min.config and we're gonna do rust.config rust as well. Uh, so now we're again doing that minimal uh, uh, configuration with Rust enabled. Um, and now it says that there's a new value for config Rust, which is uh, Y. So now Rust is configured. Uh, so now, um, actually let's take a quick look at the, the .config. Uh, Rust is available. Config Rust is equal to y to, to y here. So um, if we actually try to compile the kernel now, this is the thing we should uh, do now. I'm going to do it with, with uh, J8. Now it should compile the whole kernel, and we should have uh, after after it's done, we should have um, Rust enabled. Now we already got some some errors, and it's complaining about uh, G elf. So we're missing. Uh, a package, uh, lit elf dev. Uh, and in fact, this, this uh, step here, this one and bison and flex and all those things, we would have to do it regardless of, of Rust. Um, so let me copy this one into, because I think this one well, already has to. Anyway, so let's let's try one more time, um, and I think this this time we should have everything uh, we need. So now we see that uh, Rust C is is is, is compiling core core.o, uh, and this is going to take a, a few minutes. Um, so while while this this is building, I'd like to go back to to BusyBox uh, for a bit. Um, so. What we did with BusyBox was we uh, did a default configuration with it. Then we went into menu config and we changed uh, the settings to so that it's compiled uh, statically. And we just compiled the whole thing now. So, so we have uh, BusyBox compiled. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna run um, make install, which is um, basically going to create a, a directory uh, called underscore install for us. Which is which is our image. So this is the image that we want to run uh, our our kernel with uh, once the kernel uh, completes installation uh, uh, compilation. Uh, let's see. There's a question here. Too hard to follow up. I did not make it. Okay. Um, so what what uh, Antoine? What part of
what part did you miss? Was it on the kernel side or was it on the on the busy box side? I think I think you're muted if you're trying to say something. Um, okay, w while we wait for you, um, let's come back. Let's come back to 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 BusyBox. So this is the image we want uh, we want to run. Uh, well, not the image. These are the files uh, that are going to make up the image that that we want to. Okay, so uh, I got the answer from from Antoine. So Antoine, I'm gonna stop this, uh, but this is the command. You make LLVM dash j8 um, because I have eight cores. Um, Yeah, uh, so Antoine, for, there was a command before. Um, this one, the Rust app override. If you look up, there's a Rust app override set uh, and, and some, some, some other stuff after that. That's, so you need to run those commands so that you switch to the, to the 62 uh, version of the kernel. Yeah. So I'll continue here um, again on, on uh, continue the, the kernel where it left off. Yes, uh, this is being recorded. That will be uh, um, it will be made available later. So um, the tool we use to 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 build the image that 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 we we want is, is CPIO, right? So what you do with CPIO is you feed it a, a list of files and it it creates a a CPIO uh, image out of that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do find dot, which just gets a list of, of, of files uh, under the current directory. And we're going to do CPIO. And um, this specifies the, 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 the format that, that we want to, to, to create the, the CPIO with. Um, and we're going to do dash O. And this actually writes to, to STD out. So we're going to... Um, Redirect it to run the disk dot image. Um, yeah. So if we run this way, uh, well, actually, another thing that we want to do is we want to compress it. So we're gonna pipe it to gzip as well. I'm gonna copy this command. There are a couple of questions um, here yep. uh, in the chat as well as Q and A box, uh, Watson. Do you want me to read them out, or do you can you see them? Uh, yeah, if you could read read them out, I'm I'm trying to. No, okay. otherwise they get too distracted looking at. Oh, that's fine. Um, I'll read one, the one out in the question and answer box. Does the kernel require a specific Rust version or a minimum Rust version? So, at the moment, it, it requires a, a well, it requires a minimum version. But if you use a newer version, then it may not work, right? So, uh, use it at your own risk, right? So the idea is that if you go uh, below that, then it's unlikely to work. If you go above, it will probably work, but, but we can't guarantee. But if you use the exact version, then, then, then it will work. Uh, so we suggest that people just use the 62 version. And, and what, we'll, what, what we do is as new versions come out and uh, fewer and fewer uh, unstable features are used because they're stabilized, then we, we upgrade this, this version to, to, to the latest. Uh, and as I said, eventually we want to uh, stick to one, uh, but we're not there yet. So it would be it would be wise to run Rust up and then make sure that it's rev matched. Yes, exactly. Yes, okay. that's that's our recommendation. Okay, that's great. Thank you. And there is another question: Is there any module currently running in the new kernel release which is written in Rust? Um, don't we cannot really understand that question. There is a no new kernel release with uh, Rust yet. Yes. Um, six dot one is the first one that will include some Rust minimal yes. patch set for Rust. Maybe you can um, uh, go into more detail on that. Yes. Yeah, so it's in, but, mm -hmm. yeah. So but what you said, Shua, is, is exactly it, right? So um, the latest kernel version this is six dot zero, uh, and there is no Rust support there. Now uh, we we expect it to be to be released, the final version to be released uh, uh, on on Sunday. Uh, and then the merge window opens for 6.1. And uh, our expectation is that uh, Rust support will be, will be merged then. Right? So when the first uh, 
RC of 6.1 comes out, that's the first time you're going to have uh, Rust support. Uh, but that's a uh, uh, minimal uh, uh, patch series that, that, that goes in. So it's just add support. It doesn't add any drivers or it doesn't add a lot of abstractions uh, just yet. Those will come uh, later. So, so what, what we're going to do next after this, this part is merged is we're going to go through the, the maintainers of different subsystems and, and work with them to merge uh, uh, support and abstractions for those subsystems. Uh, for which the, the maintainers are uh, okay with, of course. Um, and then, uh, only then, should we expect to see actual drivers being, being uh, written and, and, and released in, in, in Rust. So it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a, a bit before we get there. Sure, was there anything else or was that, was that No, it? That, that's, that's it for now, it's and I will I'll, uh, ask. I'll I'll ping you if you, there is something going on. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, so, so now we, we, with this, we actually have a, a RAM disk um, dot image here uh, that we can use to boot our kernel, and we've actually managed to successfully successfully build the kernel. Um, so what we want to do next is, is we want to to run it, but we don't have QMU installed. So let's um, let's install it. Um, so there's this package called QMU KVM dash KVM. That um, if we install it, uh, will give us a QMU, um, which is a virtual machine um, manager that will allow us to to run the kernel that we built in the VM. Um, there you go. So it's installed. So so um, this is this is how this is the name of the of the binary. Uh, I'm going to do no graphic. Uh, I just want to get um, console on it. Uh, um, and we're going to run the kernel we just built. Okay. So if we just do this, uh, then you, you can see that the kernel actually runs. Um, and this is, this is the one that, that we, we just built. Um, but it, it, it fails to, to do anything useful because um, we don't have user space. Um, so we're gonna come out of it. Uh, control A X comes out of it. Uh, I'm gonna do reset here to, to reset the console so I can get line breaking back. Um, and then what we can do is we can add this in ITRD uh, to specify that busy box image that, that we compiled in this other um, window here. So it's this render slot in the image. Um, all right, so if we if we run it this way, then we, we don't have that, that error here anymore. We have this uh, periodic complaints here. But if you see, we do actually have a, a prompt in which we can, we can type commands. Um, like PS doesn't work. Uh, it's complaining that it doesn't uh, see a proc file system yet. Uh, but but the first thing we want to do is is actually uh, make this uh, go away. So let's let's stop this, and uh, let's come to the image. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to make some changes to to this image. Uh, and these actually are not even um, Rust specific. They, they, these sorts of changes you actually want to do if you if you're trying uh, just regular kernel anyway. Uh, so um, the, the, the first the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to copy. There's this like in examples. There's there's a init tab uh, there. So let's create an etc directory in here, and let's copy the one the init tab from uh, from examples into etc, and let's modify it. And what we're going to do with this file is we're going to if you scroll down, there's there's this. Uh, other TTYs here, two to five. So we're just gonna remove them. Okay, so let's just remove them. Uh, and then we run uh, CPIO again on this directory to regenerate the, the image, okay? So if we, now, now that we've regenerated the image, if we come back to the kernel and we try to, to, uh, to run it, um, we actually get the console and we don't get that periodic, uh, those periodic messages complaining that those CTYs were not available. 
Uh, we still have this complaint that it can't find this file, and this file is interesting for us because it'll allow us to, to run things as, as we boot. Uh, so we're gonna go there in a second. Um, but before we go there, let me show you one problem that we have. If we try to do PS, for example, it complains that, that uh, it can't find proc. So what we're going to do is we're gonna create proc. Or if we just create proc, uh, it's, it's empty, right? There's, there's nothing in there. So we're gonna mount a proc file system uh, there. So with this uh, mount, uh, if we go into proc, now we actually have it populated and we have all the processes here, which actually allows PS to work. So if we do PS now, we can see the, the, the processes and, and uh, kernel threads running uh, in this instance of the kernel that, that uh, we are using at the moment. Um, so let's, um, so what we want to do is when we boot, we want this to be available. Uh, so we're gonna, um, Create that file. If we scroll up, let's get the name of the file and directory. So we're going to create this file, and in this file, we're going to mount proc automatically. Um, so let's come out of here. Let's go back to the to the busybox um, installation uh, directory. Um, let's create this. Let's create this 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 directory. Um, let's edit. Uh, File in there and create the directory. And the type of, of, of uh, file system is, is proc. Uh, there's, we say none for the dev, there's no, there's, there's no device. And we don't put proc. Yeah, I think that's, that's what we want. Um, what is it complaining about? Oh. Uh, I've opened the wrong one. I want to open the one under this. Yes. Um, do it again. Yeah. So this creates a directory, and then we we mount uh, the proc file system on top of that directory with no devices. Um, why is it not allowing me to do that? Let's see. Etc. Oh, because when I did a make, I also did the make with, with a slash in the front. So I created it in my local directory, in my local file system, rather than this one. So, okay. All right, so now, now it should work. Mount that clock. All right, now, now it works. So let's look at it. Okay, so let's run uh, CPIO again to re regenerate the image. Um, and let's let's run the kernel. Uh, oh, now it's complaining that we don't have uh, permission to run the thing, so we need to to make it executable. Executable. Etc. So we, we do we do the chmod cs. Let's run CPIO again. Um, yeah, so now we can boot and we can run PS because uh, proc is mounted. In fact, power off also um, also works. It complains about some stuff, but but it it comes out of this. Um, now, so now now we have a a minimal uh, image which which works minimally with PS. And um, so what, what we're going to do next is we're going to to enable one of the um, uh, sample. Um, uh, Rust modules, and we want to 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 see it um, working. And then we'll see that, that there are a few more things that we want to to add, like networking to this uh, to this image, um, to get to the state that we were in the in the in the previous session. So let's um, let me let's let's do this. Um, We're gonna do. We're gonna go to 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 menu config. Okay, we're gonna do make LLVM equals to one. Uh, menu config, and 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 the one that I want to um, to enable is like if we go into kernel hacking, um, which is which is the last one actually. Instead instead of uh, uh, instead of going there, what we're going to do is we're going to do a search. 
going to do Rust echo server. Yes. So if 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 we are here in, in menu config and we press slash, uh, it allows us to to do to do a search. So if we do a search for Rust echo server, uh, we we find it here. And there is this one tells us that if we push one, it'll take us there. So I push one. Um, and it doesn't take me right there because uh, simple kernel code is disabled. So we need to enable it first, then we can go into it. We can enable Rust samples, then we go into it. And now we have um, a bunch of, of samples here. And one of them is this echo server. And so I'm going to enable this uh, echo server and I'm going to exit. And I'm going to save the configuration. Um, and now if I build the kernel again, I'm going to do dash uh, J8, uh, then of course I don't have to rebuild the whole thing um, because I've, I've already built it once. Uh, but it's going to uh, include now the, the echo server thing that I've, that I've just enabled. And now it's um, linking the, the rest of the kernel. Now, one thing that, that we want to do is because this, this server actually doesn't print anything to the screen. So um, let's add a, a, a print to, to that sample. Um, so we can see something on the screen once we, once we boot. So, so I open this file and I'm going to do a PR info. Hello from Echo Server. Okay, so here's the diff. Uh, so this is this is what uh, we've added. Let's see if it. Let's see if it compiles. So see, it's it's recompiling the the Echo Server. And let's try to boot uh, this now. And after booting, we actually have Rust Echo Server. Hello from, from Echo Server. So it's running. If we do an next stat, um, you can see that we are listening on. So what this Echo Server does is it, it, it listens on port 8080. And it's just an Echo Server. If you connect to it and you send some text to it, it'll send you the text back. That's 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 all it does. Um, now, if we try to connect to it, it's 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 not going to work. Um, so see, it, it it just failed, and and the reason is because um, we don't have any interfaces up. If you do if config, it's it's there's nothing there. So um, if we enable loopback at least, uh, then loopback shows up, which is good. Um, then we can connect to the to the echo server, and there you go. So if we send hello, it sends uh, hello back. Testing, testing back. And we can disconnect. So uh, one one thing that uh, we'd like to do uh, is is to have the these this interfaces automatically up on 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 the VM uh, once once we boot. So uh, we probably want to. Uh, copy that this this IF config low up. Come to our image and modify it such that we can um, automatically get uh, look back. And then we rerun CPIO. And this I'm doing manually, but uh, one thing that you can do is you can write scripts to to automate this uh, for you every time you change this and you rebuild the image. Um, uh, so anyway, so. Uh, Another another thing that that uh, we want to do actually let's 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 try that out first. Let's do a power off, um, and let's rerun the the VM, and let's see if yes. So we have um, look back there. So if we try to connect, it, it should work now. There you go. I can send messages, and it it will respond. Now. Uh, this this actually enabled uh, uh, loopback, and I can I can connect and uh, 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 within within the same VM, but I can't talk to the outside world, and the outside world cannot talk to to this VM. Uh, so one thing that we want to to enable is is is, is an actual um, um, NIC, a network interface card uh, to this to this VM. So one thing that that we can do is we can do NIC. Uh, 
to the QMU command line. Right? And you can see, uh, usually we want to run um, a user mode uh, um, uh, network and emulation on, on, on QMU. And, and the dick that we're going to, to, to show inside, inside the VM is this RTL 8139. Let's see here if, if, if this works. Um, if I do IF config, I still just get the, 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 the loop back. But if I do IP link, I see that uh, I have ETH zero here. So one thing that, that um, we can do that, that comes with, with uh, busy box is this uh, UDCHPD. And you can say interface zero. Um, UDHCP interface. Why is it not working? UDHCP. Oh, it's clients. You want the client interface. Yes, there you go. So with this, we um, we get the we get the, we get the 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 the, the, the DHCP to to run. It's it's complaining that some something is down. Um, but the thing is, uh, some some of the configuration stuff actually needs a script. So we need to, we need to, we need to go to our to our uh, image here, and and we need to create a directory. Uh, let me see here. It's it's user share uh, UDHCPC. Yeah. And we're going to copy from examples again. UDHCP uh, simple script is, is is what it's called. And uh, let me put share UDHCP. And let me see here. I have a default script. So let's let's do a cat to make sure we have the right file in there. Oh, that script. Yeah, so I just copied uh, a script from one of the examples in, in BusyBox into, into this directory. And we're gonna... We're gonna update our, our init script to, to automatically run that to the ACPC. Okay. Let's try that. Let's see if if if, if this works. Um, let's rerun our our VM. And now, with with that script uh, enabled, we actually get ETH zero uh, working, which means that we can we can do something like wget, for example. Right. So we actually have that working. In this in this system, um, so let's uh, remove this this file we just downloaded. So this actually allows us to go from uh, from from the VM to to, to the outside world. Um, the next next thing that I want to 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 add here is the ability for us to telnet into this VM, so we can actually have uh, several or, or more than one session at a time. If we need to, if you need, for example, to run a command and uh, while it's doing something, you need to run another command. Um, you may want to have this telnet um, D running on the on your on your VM, so you can interact with it from several different uh, things. So we actually have to 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 add an entry here to to the QMU command line that uh, forwards ports, okay? So we're going to do something like host, host forward uh, TCP, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna uh, forward any address from the VM, uh, any address on the, on the host to any address on the, on the VM ports 23. Okay. Now, there's another thing that we need to do. We need to, to get uh, dev and dev PTS uh, working. So let's, let's, let's try that. 
Dev, Tim, PFS. Into Dev, so our Dev now is populated, um, but we also need uh, ETS. Okay, so if we do this, we can run uh, telnet D. Okay, so telnet D is is running on the on the VM. So let's come out and um, let's telnet into port five 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 five, and now we are in, in the VM. Right, so we actually at the moment have uh, two uh, terminals open on the on the VM. One is 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 the console itself uh, from from QMU, and the other one is 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 via Telnet. And we can disconnect, and we can connect again. We can we can do th things like this. Uh, in fact, we can, for example, kill uh, the other one. And 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 well, it didn't kill it. Let's try with dash nine. Yes, so now the, the other console was killed and uh, if I press enter, uh, a new one gets created. Um, so yeah, what so. would the uh, uname show in that cell? Uh, uname dash eight show in that cell? Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so that's the one that you just built and um, RC7, cool, thank you. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is the one that I, that I just built, yeah. Um, so I, I tell that into into that, um, yeah. So 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 with this, we actually have a a um, uh, we have we we are allowed to actually connect to the to the to the VM. And so um, perhaps what we should do is we should do that all automatically. So let's let's go again to to RCS and and add those commands um, just quickly. Um, we do want that in PFS and then PTS. Uh, have PTS. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if there are no typos there, but. Um, Power off the VM. We don't actually need to make. Let's just run QMU again. Store PS. Yes, Telnet D seems to be running. So let's try to Telnet again. Yeah. So now, now we get we get Telnet uh, just by booting. We don't actually need to power off. So this. So when we powered off, it we we just lost the connection that we had. Um, and uh, this other one uh, uh, came out. Yeah. Now, another thing that we can do is we can we, let's let's forward. I'm gonna copy this command and I'm gonna forward the the other port to five 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 six eighty eighty port, which is our echo server. So if we're running here and. We, I'm going to use NC five 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 six. So you see, like the echo server that we had running inside the VM, we can connect to it from 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 the outside now. And in fact, if we do if we do an net stat, we can see that there is a connection. So we have the we have the listening socket on on port eighty eighty, and we have established connection, uh, which is the one coming from from the host into into the VM. And of course, we have Rust code there, uh, accepting these connections and, and sending these this, uh, hello messages back. Um, so another thing that I wanted uh, uh, to show you is, is uh, Rust Analyzer. So let, me, let me stop this. Uh, let me come out of, of, uh, of the VM here. So the, the idea here now is that we have, we have a, a, an image and we have everything set up so that we can compile the, the kernel and we have QMU installed and we can, we can 
run the kernel that we build, we can, uh, it has Rust enabled uh, as we, as we uh, showed with the PR info that we added to that sample. Um, we can uh, uh, interact with the outside world. The outside world can interact with us by, via, via these uh, uh, forwarded ports. Um, so one thing that I'd like to show now is, is this um, Rust, Rust analyzer thing that um, makes it very easy to um, look at the code while, while you're developing. Sure. Let's, so is there a question? Uh, yes, Betson, yeah. uh, before you, we switch gears, uh, there are three questions in the question and uh, Q&A box. I okay. can uh, uh, start reading them to you when you are ready. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. Uh, the first one is, is Rust support being added only for drivers or is there a future goal to write non-driver parts as well in Rust? Right, so so the, the, the support that is being added now is support to compile code into the kernel, right? There are no restrictions as to what it is that, that, that one is writing, right? Uh, however, we're still in this stage where we, we only uh, can only use uh, Rust C, which is based on LLVN, which doesn't support all the architectures yet. There are other projects that uh, will allow us to compile um, uh, Rust code and use the GCC backend. Uh, so we'll have access to, to, eventually we'll have access to all the architectures. So at the moment, uh, we're saying that, uh, we're recommending that people only write drivers for, for leaf nodes that you know, uh, uh, it wouldn't necessarily be needed in all architectures yet because of these uh, limitations, but it's it's just uh, mostly an architecture and, and support for subsystems thing. We'll get there eventually. Thank you. The second question is, can we also use a BusyBox container to boot the compiled kernel from? BusyBox container. Um, not sure what what is meant by a, a busy box container, uh, but what we're doing with busy box is is we're just creating an image and we're using that image to 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 boot the kernel. Um, now, if 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 someone has some other image, then they can just use it. In fact, uh, so this is just for quick prototyping. So, so it's this is uh, the busy box uh, thing that I set up that I'm showing here. This is just for you, like you're changing your code very quickly and you want to to run it and and see what, what the results are. Uh, eventually, what, what one needs to do is actually boot a, a, a system configured with the potential with default configuration and boot like a real uh, distribution, right? Like Ubuntu. You can actually uh, compile the whole kernel and, and uh, with Rust enabled and add things to it and just, just boot regular Ubuntu or Debian or what have you. Uh, so I don't, I don't quite follow the question, but if you, could, if you want to clarify, I, I, can, I can try again to answer it. Uh, while um, uh, they come back with the clarification, there is the third question. Are the configuration steps which you did for building, configuring BusyBox also documented in the Git project? I cut and pasted the quick start um, right. document in the uh, chat. So I think this might be a follow on question that are these steps that you just did in this session. Yeah. Are they documented? Yeah, I, I don't think the, the the step to do the the QMU busy box image thing is is documented. Well, actually, so um, there is there is like if, if you look at if you go into kernel uh, configs um, QMU busy box, which is the file that that we 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 introduced, uh, there's some documentation there, right? So so we actually say it's a minimal configuration, blah blah blah. We specify how how it's 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 run, you know. Uh, and in fact, we even have the command line for running QMU with it on both x86 and, and ARCH64. So this much we have. What we don't have is a link from the um, Rust documentation to this, because in fact, this is not uh, Rust specific. You can, you, can, you can do all this part uh, independent of, of, of Rust. Um, right. This is for any, th any uh, kernel image not specific to Rust, which makes it handy for people to start working um, especially if people don't have uh, hardware support and they just want to too much hardware with them um, and to use. So yes, thank you, Betson. I yeah. think that's all we have right now in the question okay. and the box and chat as well. Yeah, thanks, 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 Ron. Um, yeah, if if the person who asked the question uh, comes back, I can I can try to to, to clarify that. Um, so yeah, so so the, the thing I wanted to show. Um, 
Uh, I don't think we have a lot of time, so I'm not going to show a lot. But uh, so we, we have this thing, and, and I think I, I sort of mentioned it uh, uh, last time. We have we have this 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 target that is uh, Rust Analyzer. That um, if you run it, it creates this this file called Rust Project uh, JSON, which is a uh, uh, configuration for the Rust Analyzer LSP uh, language server. Uh, protocol. Um, so let me do this. I'm going to come to the browser and I'm going to I'm going to install uh, Visual Studio Code. And, and what I uh, use really is 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 DOVIN, but the configuration of Rust Analyzer there is, is complicated. You have to copy and paste a bunch of things from from different places. So I'm not going to show that. I'm going to show the uh, the version for Visual Studio, which is actually much much simpler to install, and I uh, just want to showcase uh, what sort of sorts of things you get uh, once once you have it. So I came to this um, to this page and I downloaded um, Visual Studio Code, um, and so I'm just going to install it. Yeah. Um, and um, once once we have it installed, I'm going to open it and I'm going to uh, install the REST Analyzer uh, extension, uh, which you can do directly uh, from from Visual Studio Code, um, and then we can Visual Studio Code. There we go. So I can so so this is Visual Studio Code. I can come to extensions. And if I type Rust Analyzer here, and I click install, so it's installing. So, so uh, um, Visual Studio Code is just an, an IDE. You can you can use it for several languages, and if you want to use it for Rust, you can install this thing. Uh, then I can come to Open Folder, and I'm going to go to Source Linux. I'm going to say Open it. Um, so here 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 we have. Um, source code, we can go into, uh, let's say file. So if, if we open the file.rs uh, in, our, in our source code, um, and like you have lots of comments and uh, lots, of, lots of code here, but um, one thing that, that, that we, we, we can do once, once Rust Analyzer is, is running, I don't know if Rust Analyzer is actually has picked up the 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 code yet? Let's see if, if I can uh, jump to the definitions and, and things like those. Um, no, it's not showing me. Maybe it's not. Well, let me look at. Let me look at the extensions again. Is it installed? Yeah. Let's let's run the target here, Rust Analyzer again, to make sure that we have. Right. Oh, okay, there you go. It's asking if I trust it. And I'm going to say that I do. So let's open that folder now. Now I think it's, it's, it's going to work. Okay, let's come to file. Let's see if we can. Oh yeah, so so now we have a lot of a lot more options here, but but the idea is so so for example, let's let's I'm here in commit and I have this ARAP uh, object, and if I just hover over it, I get the the, the documentation right. So it, it says it's coming from kernel types. Uh, it says it's a struct and uh, T is always ref counted. Then there's a description here, there's some invariants, and um, if I right click, I can uh, go to definition, and that text that it was showing there. Uh, marked up is actually coming from from this text here, right? So um, one thing that that uh, we're trying to enforce is that uh, all public um, items, structs, functions, uh, anything should should have documentation in it, right? Um, and then uh, when you have um, Rust Analyzer installed, uh, then you get this this sorts of of of, of helpful hints uh, of of descriptions, and you have you have completions too. So um, let's see if we have, so yeah, we can do something like 
we can do pile dot, and then we we get a bunch of of, of options here, right? So it's it's a reference counted thing thing. So we can clone, for example, to 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 increment the, the ref count. But we can also uh, deref to get to the to to the in the file, and then we have a bunch of other things. Um, so this is this is uh, one thing that I wanted to show was just that. Um, this tooling around uh, Rust allows us to get uh, better uh, experiences. Uh, not, I wouldn't say better necessarily, but uh, um, I don't know, uh, with more options when when you are editing source code in in comparison to to Rust. Um, we can we can we can go to references of of something, for example, very very easily and. And, and like this box shows us, and and this actually works on on any IDE that has or any editor that has support for uh, uh, um, LSPs, right? So, so in my case, I use uh, NeoVim, so it's all uh, text uh, based. It's it's not graphics like this. Um, so so let me close this, and let's uh, come back here. So uh, before before uh, people send pull requests, um, one thing that I should um, let them know is that um, we have some CI that runs a bunch of tests automatically and, and actually some commands automatically for you. So I'll show them. So this is like the sort of sorts of things that you want to do ahead of time to make sure that uh, your, your PR is not going to be rejected uh, right off the bat. Um, uh, the first thing is, is formatting. We run this uh, format check and you see like it already failed. It's, it's, it's complaining that uh, um, it's, it's not properly aligned. Um, so you can either manually go there and fix it, or you can remove the check uh, and just ask it to, for it to, to format it for you, right? And then if I, if I do a git diff, then it's not uh, misaligned uh, again. So if I run the check now, um, then it succeeds, okay? Um, now, another thing that, that we do is we, we generate uh, documentation uh, for you automatically from, from, from the source code um, and, and one thing that this uh, um, Rust doc uh, catches for me, at least when I'm developing things, is uh, when we are writing documentation, sometimes we cross reference other, other types, other functions, uh, other items in general, uh, or modules, whatever. Um, and then if you actually make mistakes in these references, uh, this Rust doc will find them and, and complain about them. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, it's, it's good for you to, 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 to run them before you submit a pull request, because if you have uh, errors like that, uh, you, you'll catch it uh, later, uh, earlier. Now, another thing that is uh, very nice about uh, running Rust Dog is that if after running it, you look at uh, uh, Rust and, and uh, doc directory, you actually have HTML documentation, all they're formatted. So uh, for example, if we open uh, this one, this is, this is the, the, the sort of thing that, that we get automatically generated for us, right? Uh, it's, it's the kernel crate and it has a bunch of modules uh, inside it. So if we go to networking, for example, <laughs> sorry, then you have all the structs decide, uh, defined inside networking and the enums. Uh, so if we go into an IPv4 address uh, and shows us the, the public parts of the definition of IPv4 address, it shows me the methods that it has um, and, and, and all the items like methods is, new and, and uh, some constants inside it, broadcast loopback, any, and in fact, you can go to the source code. You can click here and it'll show you the uh, formatted uh, source code that uh, from which this thing was, was, was extracted. Um, so um, if you want to browse your latest uh, version of documentation, you can run that uh, Rust doc and you can go into the Rust doc directory and you'll find uh, uh, everything that, that that was generated from from your uh, source uh, source code from your tree. Um, another thing that we have is we can run with Clippy equals to one, which is uh, a linter. So this is also something that that we run in the in the CI. And, and if the linter catches anything, we're gonna uh, fail uh, a pull request. So it's it's good for you to to run this. Uh, the sorts of things that uh, this this find it, it well it it. Finds occasionally finds things in code that I'm writing, but the the a, a lot of the things that it finds for me are things where I write some complicated uh, expression or, or convoluted way of doing something, and it actually shows me a, a simpler way of, of 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 doing things. So this is actually um, quite quite helpful 
uh, running running Clippy. At the moment, it, it, it didn't have any 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 complaints. Um, there was another thing that we do is Rust test, which which uh, runs uh, on the host some tests that are independent uh, of of independent of, of kernel code, right? Um, and and this is also something that we run in the CI, so it's it's something that uh, you you want to to run automatically. And if you write code that doesn't uh, depend on any of the kernel functionality, then um, we we encourage you to actually write uh, tests, and uh, this test will run on the host, uh, like like here. Now, once this is done, I'll show you another thing, which is uh, that we also run some tests that depend on on kernel code, and we use K. Uh, K unit uh, for that. At the moment, we only support uh, code coming from documentation, but uh, eventually we'll, we'll support other types of, 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 of tests. Uh, so while, while well, let's, let's wait for this. Well, actually, well, go ahead, Shwa. Mm -hmm. um, a, quick, a quick question. Um, I have been, uh, so do you have, uh, what happens when you look at the documentation for samples, for example, echo server? Do you, does it automatically generate some documentation and show us what it does? The no. source file itself didn't have any information on what it does. So it's just curious on. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it does because the, the documentation is for public things, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the, the Rust echo server, for example, I don't think it would, it would even appear there because uh, there's nothing public in it. It's not just a driver. It doesn't expose any interfaces to the outside world. Um, okay. So yeah, that, that, that wouldn't um, appear okay. there, no. Um, so one thing I noticed is I was looking at uh, uh, Rust for Linux uh, Git the other day, and then I was looking to see what exists and samples and to see. Uh, one right. thing I noticed is that like, documentation on the samples is somewhat uh, minimalistic. Um, right. yeah. So uh, it, so it might be it might be good to improve the documentation, or you can have people send you documentation. Of course, yeah. that, that's the best way to learn, right? Yes, yes. So, so th th there are, you, you're right, and we agree with you that uh, um, the documentation that is poor. There's, there's another thing that makes it even worse is that uh, the, the, the code that we have in, in samples, uh, it's, it's, it serves two functions. One is it's sample, but it's also testing, right? So, so there's mm -hmm. some code that, that is not very clear because we're trying to test some corner cases of things. And, and, and uh, so they're not really samples uh, in, in some cases, you know, uh, and people may get the wrong impression by looking at them. It's like, oh, this is so complicated. Why, why would anyone want, want to write this? So I agree we need, we should probably uh, move some of the tests out and uh, uh, improve the documentation on, on the actual samples. So the, the echo server is, is a sample uh, and it's, it's, it's um, quite small. And I'll, 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 I'll take that feedback and I'll, I'll, I'll work on improving the documentation. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You have you you are busy with the uh, more important things like how to get it uh, get the Rust integrated into kernel. I, I get that definitely. So this is just something I've observed as people. So this would become important as people um, once it gets into RC one and people start looking at it and saying, okay, how can we get involved, right? right. How can we start writing code and such? So from yes, that perspective. Yes. yes. Yes, having having samples and properly documented will, will help people uh, starting. Okay. Yes, I agree. And what you're doing now is great because this is what this is very timely for uh, the next. And then we can just point to them and say, "Hey, look at Bertson's webinar." Yes, <laughs> yes, it worked out right. It was, it was, yes. it was sort of by chance, but uh, yeah, right. I think it was good timing. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Okay, so um, are, are there any other questions? Is there any questions for now? I'm good for now. I don't see any questions either in chat or um, a Q and A box. Okay, so I'll, I'll show quickly. Uh, we only have nine minutes, so uh, we, we're good. Uh, so the, the thing I want to show is is uh, K unit. Okay, so um, let's enable it. So by default, it's 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 disabled. Uh, but if we go into uh, menu config and you search for K unit and you enable it. Um, now we have uh, Rust kernel K unit is what I, yeah that's that, that's what it's called. So let's enable. Uh, so the first thing we did here was we enabled uh, K unit itself, uh, which any any kernel of component can can and should use. Uh, and now we're enabling K unit for for the kernel crates of the Rust uh, source code. Now if we uh, save everything and we compile the kernel again. Oh, one thing that uh, we may not have time for this, but um, 
because it's going to have to recompile the whole thing. But anyway, so let's so we've enabled it and uh, let's 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 run it. Uh, let's let's recompile it. If if it finishes uh, uh, in time, we can we can uh, I'll show you something. If it doesn't, it's okay. I'll just talk about it. So so here's one thing that we do. Let's let me while it compiles in this window, let me show you uh, in this other window the, the the sort of thing that we have that is uh, cool. Um, if we go into Linux. Uh, first kernel. Um, let me see. Let's see if we can find. Um, uh, work queue. Yeah, I think work queue is 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 a good one. Um, now, if you look at the at the. Actually, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to show this in in Visual Studio Code because it's 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 better formatted. Um, so let me let me show you this. So if if we come here, where was I? I wasn't working here. So if 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 we go into some of these modules, and so I think this goes a little bit uh, uh, towards uh, what you're asking about uh, better documentation in the samples. Uh, so here's 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 one thing that is um, interesting that that we have in in Rust. Let me scroll down. Um, yeah. So 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 here here we, we have we have a, a definition of 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 work queues. Uh, it's lots of samples uh, of, of a queue, right? So if I if I hover over it and I and I come to to the examples, right? Um, you can see like I have like the following example is the simplest way to launch work item, and then there's one line that shows you how to launch a, a work item. Uh, but there's some allocation involved, blah blah. blah. There's another sample down down here that uh, shows you how to do it in the with a sort of C style where you embed something into the into some outer struct, uh, and and then you get to run. Uh, and and if, if you see, like we have documentation that says what the what the the, the this queue is uh, up here, it, it wraps the work queue struct from the C side and blah blah blah. But we have these samples as well. Now, the part that I wanted to show, which is linked to KUnit, is that uh, what we do is we actually get this code and we compile it into the kernel when KUnit is enabled, and we run it as a test in in uh, in the kernel when when we boot it. Uh, so this allows us. So this actually shows uh, 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 people uh, writing code uh, how to actually use these things, and it also shows you complete examples that we know that won't uh, uh, rot because uh, every time we compile the KUnit enabled, we compile them and, and we run them and make sure that uh, whatever we test inside uh, actually passes. Um, so uh, let me go back to the. The console, yeah, I don't think but we only have five minutes left, so I, I don't think we'll have uh, time to show this. But uh, what, what once this once this finishes, if you run QMU, just regular QMU, you'll see as as it boots uh, towards the end, you'll see K K units running all the tasks, and if and in the end, it gives you a summary of of, of the result. Uh, and if if there are failures, of course, you 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 get to see, and you should uh, you go try to figure out what the problem is. Um, but um, so I'll stop here because we only have five minutes. I'll go back to the slides. Uh, there was just one uh, thing that I wanted to say there. And then if there are questions, we can. There is one question, but yes, um, I, uh, you can switch back to slides and then wrap up and then we can ask do the question. Yeah. I'll just uh, bring it here just real quick. Uh, Yeah, this screen. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the last thing I wanted to say was that we actually have another session coming up um, uh, next month, and I'm going to to show how to write async Rust code uh, in the kernel. So that's the Echo server is an example. There's an IP server that I talked about in the in in Congrejos, uh, this uh, Rust for Linux workshop that we had. Um, a few weeks back, um, 
and we're going to show you how how to, how to write async code. And um, the idea there is to is to show how you can write code that is uh, like straight line code and uh, that looks like you're burning a thread, but it's not really running burning a thread. It's running it in a, in a single thread of your choosing, or if it's running it's running the work queues managed by the kernel and and uh, they're available on the on the C side. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, all I had. Sure, if there are questions, um, I'd be happy yeah. to try to answer them. Yes, uh, there is one in the Q&A. What about Rust and kernel cross compilation? Let's say for ARM architecture, is there any specific hint regarding uh, cross compiler or two chains? So uh, we support cross compilation. Uh, and in fact, I've, I've uh, um, my my primary uh, uh, environment for testing was AR64 uh, before, um, and um, the the there's actually co compiling uh, Rust code is actually simpler because we don't need uh, specific two chains installed. Uh, the the Rust C is supposed to to generate uh, pretty much anything. So you so you 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 it's it's actually easier to do cross compilation uh, with Rust than it is uh, for the rest of, of the C side. And, and that is supported. Uh, we, we only have a subset of, of, of uh, architecture supported, uh, but those that are supported uh, support cross, uh, cross compilation. It's actually simpler. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything about GCC Rust project? Can you be more specific, Vishal, about the question? I don't know that I understand what you're asking, unless, Wetson, yeah, the so, question is clear to you. So, yes, I, I, I know what, what they're talking about. Um, so GCCRS, uh, it has been approved by the GCC steering committee. Uh, in the next GCC release, there will be like, like a alpha or beta version of the thing. It's not ready. Uh, if you actually go to um, the, the, the videos for Linux plumbers uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, there is actually a, a talk there. So in plumbers, we actually had a microconference for Rust. And we actually had the folks involved in GCCRS uh, give us a presentation, uh, which was very cool. They can, they can, you could, you should, I recommend that you watch those. Uh, now, in addition to that, there's another uh, uh, project uh, whose author also presented at, at Plumbers in a, in a different session uh, of just uh, using Rust C itself as the front end, but using a GCC, uh, GCC's backend to generate the code. Uh, and that project is a little bit farther out. And in fact, uh, he, uh, uh, Anthony is, 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 is the person that uh, he can actually build uh, Rust for Linux now with a few hacks, but he can build it and he can uh, boot uh, the kernel. Uh, it's a bit hacky, but uh, it's getting there. Uh, so both, both, project, both projects are very exciting and we look forward to seeing them uh, come to, to, a, to a, a final state uh, next year or so, I hope. Cool. That's all we have, questions wise. Okay. Uh, that's all I had too. So, I'll, I'll... oh, looks like there is one more that came out. Right. Um, I am a complete beginner to the contribution to Kernel. Where should I start? Hope the question is not. Oh, I see. Um, go ahead. I would say I can feel that. Go ahead and um, start um, uh, taking a look at. Um, we have several resources, um, events, uh, this um, mentorship series presents a lot of, uh, gives you a lot of opportunities and um, to look at what's the, uh, how you can get involved. And then we also have a free coursework available on the training site. If you go look for LFD 103, that kind of gets you bootstrapped on um, what, how to set up your environment and then uh, start working there. And then um, you can also participate on uh, Cardinal Newbies IRC channel. Uh, people are very really helpful helping uh, beginners there. And so there are a lot of resources available to you as a uh, Cardinal developer. And then if once you get started, you could also participate in mentorship series. The last slide that um, Wedson had in the deck uh, gives you a lot of information on resources for new developers. Yeah, and, and, and the, the previous session that, that uh, I presented, it, that doesn't really assume uh, much in terms of, of, of knowing kernel development and things like that. Um, so you could check it out too. You can, can follow the steps there. And, and uh, with those steps, you can, you can build a, a module and uh, hello world sort of thing. Um, 
yeah, so so I think that's it. So, um, uh, um, Candice, if you want to take over. Yes, thank you so much, Wetson and Shua, for your time today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today, and a copy of the presentation slides will be added to the Linux Foundation website. We hope you are able to join us for future mentorship sessions, and have a wonderful day.